Hey everybody, it's Justin from J3 Creation, and today we're going to try what I call a uh, side swirl. I don't quite know what to call it. It'll be kind of in the mindset of the reflection pattern where we um, fold the shirt inside itself and the sleeves inside itself. But uh, this was just an idea I had and I wanted to see how it would turn out. So I figured I'd turn on the camera and let you guys follow me on the journey. So gotta make sure and get the sleeves in each other. And then we'll uh, just kind of go like that. And if you haven't seen me um, do a shirt like that, I do have some videos, or Mr. Tie-Dye has some videos, but there are definitely videos out there on a couple different ways to get a shirt folded in half, so that's just my way. Okay, so um, typically a lot of people do the psychedelic mindscape um, design, and that focuses a lot on right here and up here, but I wanted to see what happens when we do a spiral kind of right here instead of, you know, right here or here. And then just probably scrunch the rest. So we're going to flip it around here and make our focus on the opposite side. So, in order to get a decent spiral, I'm going to start about halfway. And, uh, gosh, there's so many things out there on perfect um, pleated spirals, but... I'm probably not going to do any of that today. I guess my point in saying that is that you could do a lot better spiral than this if you really wanted. Alright, so we got the basic swirl in there. Kind of some bigger chunks going on. So yeah, that's the basic swirl. You can get as crazy with it as you like. That is honestly not my best swirl I've ever done. I'm not super proud of it, but... We're just going to scrunch the rest, and I might even scrunch a little bit of this side, just to give it a fun effect. And you can see that didn't take long or anything. So, I'm gonna get a few elastics on here, and we'll get it over to the dye station. Want to ensure that our uh, spiral stays intact. I'm not using that rubber band. So one more should be good. Okay. So I might mess with the spiral a little bit before I get it to the dye station, but that in general is the basic idea. And we'll see how it turns out. I'll probably do some color on one side and then black on one side so that you can really see a nice color. Okay, so here we are at the dye station, and I think I'm going to attempt kind of a rainbow diagonal pattern on one side and then black on the opposite side. And so, realistically, you could do any sort of color pattern here diagonally. This way you could do straight lines or, you know, lines the other way. 
You can do specs of color, you can do ice dye, you can do muck dye. The only limitation is your imagination, really. But today, I'm going to do a diagonal rainbow. And um, just so we're aware of how we're dying and what we're dying, this is the top, this is the sleeve, this is the bottom, this is the back. And if you remember from the video, I kind of just swirled it in the back of the center there. So, here we go. We'll start with red. And when you're laying your die, you want to be very careful and precise. So again, just going real, real slow and careful with the die. So there's our red. And then we're gonna leave a little bit of spacing And we're going to leave a little bit of spacing between the red and the orange just because the dial spread. Try to leave a little bit anyway. And this should come out with a really cool pattern as far as the uh, swirl goes. At least that is my hope. And again, just being very careful and pretty slow with my dye application. I recently added um, urea to all my dyes, and I'm interested to see how that helps with the... Uh, mandala process and the saturation process it's definitely helping with not having as much gunk um, you can see a little bit of gunk in the red maybe I just mixed that a little heavy yet but I'm not sure all right So we're going to let this batch or sit for about probably 48 hours. I typically only do it about 24 hours, but I'm wanting to again check the saturation levels from the urea and just kind of make sure that the dye has as much of a chance to bond with the fabric as it can. Um, all this is a basically chemical reaction between the dye and the soda ash and the fabric. I don't want to sound too scientific because I really don't know what I'm talking about, but I know a little bit. So, last color of the rainbow, purple. Um, I was thinking about trying to throw some pink on here, but... Meh. Um, so we're going to flip that and then lay black all on the other side. And honestly, you could wait a few minutes with it um, turned right side up with the color up and just let things saturate down. I know people that do that before they lay the black dye, but... I'm not going to do that today, but I might let it sit with the color up 
um, just so that the color kind of runs down and the black is a little bit more minimal. You could probably let the black sit on top and let that kind of come through a little bit more. It's all up to you. A lot of the art is preference. Um, so just kind of about what you're trying to accomplish or experiment with. Okay, so there we go. That was pretty quick and easy. And like I said, I'm going to let it sit with the color up. And we'll see how it turns out. I'm pretty excited. I think it'll be very beautiful. Okay, so this is dried and done. I think it's incredible. Those side spirals really kind of fan out and make something pretty. I think that little bit up there is really cool too. I would love to see what some other color schemes do to the process, but I think it's incredible. And thanks for watching.